Bonjour tout le monde! Hi everybody! Monsieur Steve here with another story time with Monsieur Steve. Uh, if you're tuned in last week, uh, you'll notice that I have finally got these lights to work. Uh, they were not functioning or behaving, but um, thankfully today they're up and running. Uh, it's a bit gray outside, uh, so I figured why not light up our lives just a little bit. If it's your first time hanging out with me, Thanks for showing up. Uh, I hope you enjoy the stories I have to share with you. Uh, so if it is your first time, please hit that subscribe button so that you'll never miss a video with me. And if you can't and you are watching, please give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out. Uh, all right, so today I have an English story to start and then I'll move on to a French. The first story is called Caramba and it's written and illustrated by Marie-Louise Gay. Um, after that, we'll be reading a French story called Le Château de Monsieur Monsieur, uh, and it's written by Jean-Viave Côté. Uh, you'll notice a theme. It's, uh, it's maybe a little intentional, so maybe I meant to have it happen. But you see here that there is a cat and a cat, and we got some cats. You may or may not know this about me, but Monsieur Steve loves the cats. Uh, and we got some shout outs today. A really big shout out to Jack, his mom, Sarah, his classmates in Miss Danzo's class at Withrow Avenue Public School. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Um, if you would like a shout out, uh, please have someone message me on Twitter at Mr. Steve one and I'll be happy to do so the next time we have this going on. Uh, and a big, big, big thank you to Scholastic and Canadian Children's Book Center for letting me read these books. All right, let's get this party started. Caramba by Mary Louise Gay. I really love this story. I hope you do too. Caramba looked like any other cat. He had soft fur and a long stripy tail. He ate fish. He purred. He went for long walks. But Caramba was different from other cats. He couldn't fly. Wait, cats can fly in this story? It worried him a lot. Every cat in the world can fly, he said to Portia, his best friend, except me. I'm different too, said Portia. I'm pink and fat and have a curly tail. You're a pig, cried Caramba. All pigs are pink and fat. And I can't fly either, said Portia. Pigs don't fly, cats do, sighed Caramba. Everyone knows that. If you have a cat out there, can your cat fly? I know I'd be in for a lot of trouble if my cat puppy could fly because he'd be after all our food all the time. It was true. Soon after they learned to walk, young cats would begin to fly. They would leap off the cliffs and soar above the ocean. Caramba watched them swoop and glide and skim the waves. That looks like fun, said Portia. Don't you even want to try? No, said Caramba. So in this story, all the cats can fly. Uh, Caramba can't, and he seems to be, you know what, okay with that. But secretly, Caramba did try. Oh, he jumped off a small rock and fell flat on his face. What are you doing, Caramba? asked Portia. I'm looking for caterpillars, mumbled Caramba, his mouth full of grass, for my caterpillar collection. I don't think that's true. We know what happened. That's okay. Then Caramba leaped off a chair and landed in his grandpa's lap. Ay, Caramba, cried his grandfather. What are you doing? I'm, I'm admiring your slippers, muttered Caramba. They're, they're very nice. If any of you ever watched a show called The Simpsons, I Caramba is, uh, is, is a part of that show, so that's why I laughed. Caramba decided to try on a windy day. He ran as fast as he could and flapped his arms. What are you doing up there, Caramba? asked Portia. Eh, just hanging around, said Caramba, waiting for my socks to dry. Finally, Caramba gave up. That's it, he told Portia, I'll never fly. What? You can't fly? said Bijou. Caramba looked up. His heart sank. 
His cousins, Bijou and Bug, were hovering just above his head, purring loudly. That's ridiculous, said Bug. Every cat knows how to fly. Caramba can do other things, said Portia. He collects caterpillars. He tells stories. He cooks cheese omelets. Mm, I love cheese omelets. But he can't fly, <laughs> laughed Bug. Caramba, what's wrong with you? Oh, poor Caramba. His cousins aren't very nice. I'm not okay with that. I really like how Portia like stepped up and, and tried to point out all the good things that he can do. Um, that's really nice of her. Caramba didn't answer. What could he say? That he was afraid to fly? That flying made him dizzy? That he'd tried over and over and over again and failed every time? The cats flew away, giggling and weaving between the clouds. Let's do something else, said Portia. Uh, let's go for a ride in the rowboat. I don't want to do anything else, said Caramba. I want to be alone. And how many of you out there want to be alone when you feel sad or upset? It's pretty normal. I get that. Caramba walked slowly down to the pier. What is wrong with me, he thought. Why am I different? He wondered how it would feel to fly, to float like a cloud, to be light as a feather, to be free as a bird, to be like all the other cats. It probably felt wonderful. Then, with a furry whirring noise, Bijou landed on the pier. I have an idea, Caramba, said Bijou. We'll give you a flying lesson. What if you drop me, said Caramba. What if, don't be such a scaredy cat, said Bug. Cats are meant to fly. Bijou and Bug each grabbed one of Caramba's paws. Up they went. The wind whistled through their fur. Birds swooped beneath them. Caramba opened his eyes. <gasps> he was amazed. He could see forever. He could see forests and rivers, red roofs on tiny houses, the patchwork squares of fields. It was stupendous. It was also scary. Now the ocean glistened, moving like a giant animal stretching out beneath them. Are you ready? asked Bijou. Caramba's throat was dry. Uh, no, he whispered, but they didn't hear him. They let him go. Fly, Caramba, cried Bijou. Flap your arms, whirl your tail. But Caramba fell like a stone into the dark water. Aw, poor Caramba. Bubbles rose around him. Seaweed tickled his paws. Caramba opened his eyes. Schools of fish were staring at him. Crabs scuttled over the white sand. Sea urchins and starfish basked in the blue light. Caramba's fur waved softly in the water. He was floating. Caramba flapped his arms and glided through the water. Caramba whirled his tail and soared through the seaweed. He somersaulted and swooped. He was light as a feather, free as a bird. It was like flying. That's so cool. Up above, Portia, Bug, and Bijou were very worried. Caramba, they called. Caramba! Suddenly, Caramba popped out of the water. I'm here, he cried. His cousins stared in amazement as he swam toward the rowboat. What are you doing, cried Bijou. Cats can't swim. Everyone knows that. Well, I can, said Caramba. What do you know? A cat that can swim. How was it? asked Portia. Wonderful, said Caramba, drying his ears. You should try it. Eh, I just might, said Portia. Who knows? Maybe pigs can swim too. All right. What a great story. So we have the tale of a cat named Caramba who, you know, can't quite do what other cats can do. And he learns that, you know what, being different is totally cool. So everyone watching out there, if you're different from other people in any different way that you can think of, maybe you're short or tall or big or small, or maybe the color of your skin is different than people around you, everyone is beautiful. Everyone belongs. And it's stories like these that really warm the heart. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so if you are English speaking, that concludes our English portion of the day. Uh, but please come back again. I will be doing this next Friday as well at one o'clock. And if you haven't already, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel so you never miss a video. Next up, je vais maintenant parler en français.
Ah, je vais lire « Le château de Monsieur Monsieur ah, ». C'est écrit par Geneviève Côté. Ah, alors, je vais commencer. « Le château de Monsieur Monsieur ». J'adore les histoires de Monsieur Monsieur. Ils sont toujours vraiment intéressants. Alors, « Monsieur Monsieur vit au sommet d'une grande colline. Il veut y construire un grand château. » He wants to construct like, a really big castle. Monsieur, monsieur aime que tout soit grand. He likes when things are really big. Chouk, 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 chouk. Monsieur taille des blocs pour bâtir son château to construct it. Il est trop occupé pour remarquer les gros trous qu'il laisse derrière lui. Alors, chaque fois qu'il enlève un bloc, il fait un trou. He makes a hole. Chuk, chuk, chuk. Euh, Qu'est-ce qui fait tout ce bruit? Un peu inquiet, les amis de Monsieur Monsieur arrivent en courant. Qu'est-ce que c'est ces trous? What are these holes? Qu'est-ce que c'est ces blocs? What are these blocks? Mais Monsieur Monsieur ne les entend pas. He doesn't hear. Il est bien trop occupé à travailler. Bloc par bloc, petit à petit, son château devient de plus en plus grand. Wow, son château est si grand maintenant. Mais regarde, qu'est-ce qu'il laisse après ça? La colline. C'est plein de trous. Monsieur, monsieur, coupe et empile. Cuts and stacks. Coupe et empile des blocs jusqu'à ce qu'il n'y a plus rien à couper, plus rien à empiler. Nothing left to stack or cut. Enfin, il s'arrête et regarde fièrement, very proud, uh, par la fenêtre. Hmm. Il n'y a pas grand-chose à voir, s'étonne monsieur, monsieur. Alors, regarde. Il n'y a pas grand-chose. Aux abords du château, ses amis commencent à rouspéter. « Qu'est-ce qui est arrivé à la colline ?» demandent Otto et Renaud. « What happened to the hill ?»« Où est mon coin de sieste préféré ?»« Where's my corner, uh, my favorite corner where I take a nap ?» dit Henriette. « Où sont les fleurs ?» ajoute le vieux Jim Panache. « Où est passée l'herbe que j'ai grignote ?»« Grignote. »« L'herbe is grass. »« Au déjeuner ?» demande Sammy. « Où est la réserve de noix que nous avions cachée ?»« Where are nuts that we hid ?» s'écrit Zep et Zap. Un par un, ils avancent sous les fenêtres du château, under the uh, <coughs> windows of the castle. Je pense qu'ils commencent à comprendre. Ils regardent tous monsieur, monsieur, qui se sent soudain très petit. He feels really small. Il se sent très petit. Oh, oh, je pense que j'ai fait une grosse bêtise, dit-il après un moment. Je devrais peut-être tout replacer. Maybe I should put everything back. Qu'est-ce que vous pensez à la maison? Il a, il a pris tout ce temps-là pour construire une très grande château. Et maintenant, il pense que peut-être il doit remettre les blocs. Oui, je pense que ça, c'est probablement euh, le, le bon choix. Oui, s'écrit ses amis en se précipitant pour l'aider. Tous ensemble, ils démontent le grand château, bloc par bloc, petit à petit. Et bloc par bloc, petit à petit, il remet tout en place comme avant. Just like it was before. Presque, almost comme avant. Il reste encore un morceau, dit monsieur. Monsieur, j'ai bien regardé partout, mais je ne sais pas où il va. Qu'est-ce qu'on en fait? Après avoir chuchoté, chuchoté, whisper, Quelque chose aux autres. Renaud lui dit, « Ferme les yeux. Nous avons une idée. » Alors, ils ont une idée. Ses amis ont une idée. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Je ne sais pas. Quand monsieur, monsieur ouvre les yeux, ses amis crient, « Surprise! » Oh, ça c'est si gentil. Regarde, ses amis ont construit un petit château pour lui. Ils ont transformé sa petite maison en petit château. 
Ce soir, au petit château de Monsieur Monsieur, il y aura une grande fête et tout le monde est invité. And everyone's invited. Alors, j'espère que vous avez aimé ces deux histoires-là. I hope you like both the stories, if you're still here and speak English. Um, thanks so much for coming by. I love doing this. And if you love watching these videos, please give me a big thumbs up and click on the subscribe button if you haven't already. And please feel free to let everybody know that this is something we do every Friday at 1 p.m. while schools are uh, not in session, but in session at home. Uh, and also, Have some fun. Go watch my other videos, please. They're there for you. Uh, alors, au revoir et merci, mes amis. À la prochaine.